Is Seattle trying to make the juvenile crime crisis worse? Welcome to The Jason Rand Show, presented by None Better Tax Resolution. <music> Seattle's soft on crime approach let another juvenile criminal suspect off the hook after the juvenile detention center again refused a felony booking. Seattle police say a 17-year-old female suspect tagged property during an anti-Donald Trump protest over the weekend. Now, the suspect allegedly vandalized several concrete columns of the Seattle monorail, leaving comments like F Trump, pigs leave, Seattle with Gaza, and claims Boeing, I think she meant Boeing, has blood on its hands. Seattle police arrested the suspect for malicious mischief in the second degree. Now, they say they found her with black spray paint and matching spray paint on her hands. But the Children and Family Justice Juvenile Detention Center in Seattle refused to book her for the suspected felony crimes, and she was just released to the custody of her parents. The chances of the suspect facing prosecution are slim. The only chance to maybe get her on the right path would have been sometime at the Juvenile Detention Center. But in Seattle and King County, we give endless passes to juveniles. It should come as no shock that the strategy has created a juvenile crime crisis. This move signals a clear message to all the teens watching. Go ahead, tear up the city. You're not gonna face any real consequences. Seattle and the region are facing a juvenile crime crisis where kids are escalating from petty crimes to serious felonies. And they're doing it with little fear of consequence. And it's that lack of consequence that ensures this young suspect will only feel compelled to continue and likely escalate in alleged crimes. In 2020, we saw Antifa thugs and other extremists dressed in black bloc destroy parts of the city while their less violent counterparts pushed the city to defund the police and scare good cops out of the department. We've been left with a depleted police force with over 600 fewer cops. And at the state level, Democrat legislators pushed through bills softening penalties on criminals and giving special protections to juvenile criminals. Consequently, crime exploded. Juveniles increasingly became responsible for some of the most heinous acts. Does anyone really think this 17-year-old isn't going to escalate her alleged crimes, especially since she's been programmed to think what she's doing is heroic and meaningful? The core problem here is a misguided far-left belief that locking up teens somehow harms their future prospects more than letting them run wild on our streets. But the reality is that when we don't enforce the law, we're not giving them a second chance. We're encouraging them to reoffend, emboldening them to test the limits even further. We're letting these kids know that they can get away with just about anything. But eventually it catches up with them. Eventually it does more damage to their future and the future of others than a few hours in juvenile detention ever could. No one's got the stomach for throwing an alleged teenage tagger in jail for more than a few hours. I don't even think she should be seriously charged. But this is the exact kind of teen who could potentially learn a lesson before it's too late. We can't be shocked when they grow up to become even more reckless, even more violent, because our system told them it's okay to be that way. How do we expect them to grow into responsible adults when we're teaching them the exact opposite? I sat down with our local tax expert and advocate, Greg Nunn from None Better Tax Resolution. Tell me a little bit about the Fresh Start program, because again, based on how it's promoted, it seems really, really simple. This Fresh Start program and those that phrase has been around for many, many, many years now. But it's a great marketing tool to say, hey, Fresh Start. And in a way, for those that qualify, it is. It, what it essentially is, is an offer and compromise. And to get that, there's two main criteria a person must qualify for. One, they must have limited or no equity in assets. So generally, anyone in the Puget Sound region that owns a home and has for several years, they're going to have a lot of equity. They won't qualify. And the other is an income level. And that all depends upon your family size about how much income that could be. But both of those standards need to be met to qualify. Most people do not. If you're having trouble with the IRS, then call Greg Nunn of Nunn Better Tax Resolution. From stress to success with IRS solutions. 425-947-1967 or Google N-U-N-N, Nunn Better Tax Resolution. Did you like that commentary? Make sure you subscribe to the podcast of The Jason Ranch Show. Get it at ktth.com or wherever it is you download your podcasts.